Welcome to Tanya Today. I'm Rabbi Roni Fine, coming to you from Chabad Zuchin Kadeshim in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. We welcome Greg in Bakersfield, California. Probably still dark out there. Dam in Indonesia. Might be dark there too. <laughs> yeah, on the other side. Uh, Gilis in Georgia. 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 Welcome. And Michael, uh, or it's uh, probably still some still some sunlight as Shabbos is approaching in Germany. Gene is in Pennsylvania. Welcome. Tim in Texas. Boker Tov, Eugenia in Calgary. Welcome. Rusty is with us also in Texas. Davida and Liba. Aziz and Freiloche. Love their Yiddish. In uh, New York, John is with us in North Carolina. David, also in California. Oh, I see. All right, I am. Didn't realize. Okay, thank you, thank you, Bajja. Um, Robert in Boston, Shalom. Julie in Florida, where it's beautiful every day. Amazing. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Susan with us. Sarah in New York, if I remember. Welcome back. Uh, Diane in, in Arizona is with us. Oh, okay. And who else is there? Michelle. Lori in North Carolina. Andrea in Phoenix. Russ is with us in Florida, if I remember correctly. Betty, you have to remind me, I don't remember. Tatanya, shalom from, welcome. And Joe is with us with in Benakia, Colombia. Seattle is Tatanya with us, beautiful. Almost Tanya. <laughs> Cindy in Florida, Boca Raton, Natin in Canada. Lardano, all in Calgary. Oh, we have another Calgarian. Beautiful. Clubhouse, we have with us Sabatia, Vilma, Marcy, Luzina, Adam, Michelle, Tim, uh, David, Selena, Mark, and Lauren is with us. Beautiful. Okay. Instagram. Rala, I can't make out. Yen to I can make out. Green Homer. <laughs> Thomas. Akoi. HXX. Jocelyn. Uh, some handles I can't make out. We continue in chapter 9. Is war a good thing? Ultimately, Mashiach is coming, and there will be no more war. Well, what kind of war won't it be? And is war such a bad thing? Are there some wars that are good? I guess you would say, you know, Second World War to fight against the, the Nazis, Yimach Shemam, is a good thing. But the concept of war, is that good? So this chapter in one word is now hummus, battle, war. So we spoke yesterday about our heart, two ventricles of the heart, the left that the, we have the animal soul, and in the right we have the godly soul, primarily the brain, but reflects itself in the, <coughs> <clears throat> reflects itself in the, um, right ventricle of the heart and um, that's what we explained yesterday which leads up to today you know in the story of Rivka Rebecca when she was expecting and she felt a battle waging inside of her many women you know when they're pregnant they feel <laughs> morning sickness right what was the battle waging inside of her? Well, she had twins. She had uh, 
Yaakov and Esau, Jacob and Esau. And uh, she, the sages of the day, told her that there will be one nation which shall prevail over another nation. In other words, here we have two individuals, Yaakov and Esau, Jacob and Esau, that represent metaphorically Jacob, the divine soul, Esau, the animal soul. And what are they doing? They're at war. In utero, they were at war. Right? So this is the concept, then, of another metaphor. <laughs> another metaphor of the body, which is called a small city by King Solomon. <coughs> and there's two kings that are warring between each other. Each one wants to capture and dominate and to rule over by, the cons by consent, ultimately, of the populace. Meaning, each king wants to, wishes to direct the inhabitants according to what their will is and what they want, and that people should obey the decrees that are put upon them. That's the metaphor. What's that war? That war is of us, two souls, a divine soul and a vitalizing animal soul that's within us. <coughs> and there's a war going on, or potentially at least, not necessarily. We'll, we'll get back to that afterwards. There's a war. What is it? Each king wants to take control. So the divine soul's will, this king, right, well, its desire is that she, because the soul, neshama in Hebrew is feminine, the soul is feminine, the divine soul in particular. Why is it feminine? Why not? <laughs> because feminine quality means a recipient. The soul is a recipient of a part of God. So what's its desire? It wants this divine soul within us. And th this is what it wants, right? <laughs> that it should rule alone, that she, this divine soul, should rule alone over the entirety of the person and direct the person entirely. And all of the organs that should be disciplined, first of all, to listen to the divine soul. And furthermore, to ultimately surrender. Bottle. Bittle. To surrender. Meaning that every limb of the body should surrender and obey only the her will, the will of the neshama, of the divine soul. Further, third level, first level is just discipline. Second lender is surrender. Completely surrender your will. In other words, the body's will to the will of the divine soul. And the third is not just surrender, but even greater, a chariot. The, met the metaphor of a chariot. What's the metaphor of a chariot? As a chariot is ridden by its rider, it has no will or whim of its own. Completely directed. Completely an instrument of the driver. So so is the body a complete instrument. Complete vehicle of the divine soul, and nothing more. Moreover, that the, not just only the organs, the body, but even the garments, meaning the garments of self-expression of the individual should be completely ruled by the godly soul, by this king, and uh, leaving no place for not the faculties and not the garments to, of self-expression of the individual to have any room for the other king, meaning the animal soul. So specifically, the Altareb explains 
we have three uh, parts of our faculties uh, of our the, of our intellect faculties. So what does that mean? That our chokma, our ingenuity, our our bina, our understanding, and our das, our connectivity, should be completely bound up with the divine. Completely, making no room for anything else. Being able to to meditate and to think about God, about our connection to God, about good and goodness in our minds and that that should then not stay in our minds but then come to into our hearts with a a love of god uh fiery flashes of love that we thirst and pine and desire for him to connect that we should love god with all our heart with our soul with all our might from the depths of our heart and not only from the depths of the heart because remember we have two hearts so from the right ventricle, where of course where that, where the godly soul resides or reflects itself, so to speak, it resides in the brain, but comes to, reveals itself in the heart, right, right ventricle. But it should be such a love that it's overflowing. Where? Into the left ventricle of the heart. That not only is there a love of God from the godly perspective, but even the animal soul now, in the left ventricle that is of negativity, that it only desires what it wants, that desires the lusts and so on, that it's transformed from a lust to, of, of, of the of mundane things for a love of God. That even the animal soul has a love of God. And this is what it says in the Shema, and you shall love the word of God with, the whole of Avcha. It should really should say Bechol Libcha, the proper Hebrew, has an extra base there. So as our sages explain, Bechol Levavcha means two bases, meaning two hearts. There's two hearts here. The right ventricle, as we've explained, the divine soul's love for God, and then in the left ventricle, that it should overflow the love that even the animal soul also now comes to love God. And to, to such an extent that it will come to a level of avaraba, a magnanimous love that's so powerful and abundant love. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's unpack this. <laughs> Powerful stuff. So is war good? Well, it depends where it's taking place. On the outside? No. Warring with your boss at work, warring with your uh, spouse, warring with your friends, warring with whoever. No. Terrible. Terrible. But warring with yourself between the godly soul and the animal soul that's the only battle in life that there is ultimately any other battle is of total non-significance if i understand what's going on inside of me and where the things are coming from and then there was the first eight chapters right now we're coming to chapter nine about the battle but we, I, if I understand where I'm coming from and what's going on inside of me, and I'm aware that I've got an element in me that is so self-directed, may not be evil, you know, evil, uh, you know, Attila the Hun here, but it's self-directed. It's the animal soul that's talking inside of me, and I have. A, but then I allow the godly soul. And we're going to explain a lot more on this, but we're just setting the stage over here. And allow the the godly soul. So what's happening? Powerful. <coughs> a battle, a war. It's the healthiest thing. That's when we're alive. When we're on autopilot, we're not unless you're a righteous person. 
So then you're going with your godly soul. We're not. So when you're an autopilot and there isn't any kind of two sides, right, desiring, there's no sense of, you know, there's the natural urge that I have that's in the left ventricle of my heart of my animal soul. But I have the other king that's battling. That's when we're really alive in, in this battle. This is great. When we don't have the battle, that means not really alive. Because we're just living instinctually. Now, the ultimate goal over here, of course, is, you know, that we uh, win the, we win all of these battles and, you know, we win the battles day in, day out, right? Moment for moment. And, and, and as we explain, and as we explained over here, the godly soul, what does it want? It wants complete, well, first, just obey. Do what you got to do. Then come to a higher level. Surrender. Don't just obey. Hey. Surrender. You realize that this is the greater me. The better me. So just, you know, surrender your, your will. What you, and just, and hear the godly soul in you. Surrender to it, to her. Then ultimately a chariot. Well, that's already, you know, righteous people that are a complete vehicle, that their body, their animal soul, is a complete vehicle. The animal soul has been transformed, but it is a complete vehicle only for the divine. Okay, that's a very high level. But that's what the divine soul wants, ultimately. Think about it, a king who, you know, conquers a land. You know, let, not a not a cruel king, not a king that is, you know, as a despot. Yeah, take the metaphor of a, a good king who only wants good for the people. Whatever that means, right? Again, just take the metaphor. What does he want? The people just to uh, be under his thumb and no... He wants them to appreciate their, uh, his vision and how his vision is better for them. Well, that's what the godly soul wants to do to our, to our animal soul and body. To appreciate, whoa, look how great this is. This is amazing. So not to merely, not to just force. Okay, that's the first level, obey. Second level, surrender. Wow. This king's a great king. I really wants the best for us. Okay, who is that? My divine soul wants what's best for wants what's best for me. So let me surrender and become a chariot, and that in every aspect of my life, the divine soul will express itself in my mind, in my heart, to such a degree that it is overflowing. The divine soul's connection and the love of God that it's affecting the animal soul. Now, what's the difference between the love that will be in the animal soul and the love that will be in the godly soul? So the the love of the godly soul is for no reason except wanting to connect. There's no other reality be it's not separate from God. Um, the the love of the animal soul will be is, oh, this is beneficial, this is really good. It's like you know the the the, the you know the animal soul can have sweetness from a fruit, but then it you know that 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 fruit was sweet, but it, the taste is gone. Then you can have sweetness from some music that can last longer because the music can be in your in your ear and your head beyond when you heard the music. Then there's even greater sweetness, a sweetness of a really rich 
idea, concept. And then there's a richness and a sweetness in godliness itself. So the animal soul can appreciate that. It's, a re it's re the refinement of our animal soul. It can truly appreciate that. That is the love of the animal soul that is spilled over from the king, the neshama, and her desire to completely rule. Completely rule even the animal soul's love. All right. Questions, comments, thoughts? Let us. Let me see any questions. A reminder, Rambam at 1 o'clock today. Um, and a reminder, next on Sunday, right after our class, we'll begin our crowdfunding charity campaign, matching campaign. That for every dollar that's given, it will be matched. Um, I don't see Rick, your question. Ah, uh, missed it. Please put it in again. Sam Khai should be gesund and well. Where are, where are these questions? I don't see question marks. Davida, please repost them. I don't see them. I'm sorry. Ah. Anna, how can. Karim interpret the chariots. Karayim interpret the chariots. I don't know what that... I'm, I'm sorry, I don't get the question. Uh, Lori, the battle is difficult when you are working in a place where you need to be strong. Oops. You need to be strong among others that are practicing survival of the strongest in speech combined with the physical... Uh, strength that they are not trying to be kind unless it is for achieving a gain for self yeah I hear you it's a job as long as a person goes home from work and rebalances back to Torah and it's okay for, uh, for our soul so uh, Lori yeah sometimes you know you go to work and you're dealing with people that are they're not there's no battle in their life between a higher self and a lower self all there is is complete self-absorption. How can I, on your back, get to a better place in my life? Um, and greater achievement in my life. So first thing is we can't let that affect us. We can't let that affect us that we should, you know, in the workplace, um, follow that. We have to follow our integrity. And our, and our truth that we're learning here and not let that um, guide us and it's difficult for sure when everybody's around you it's just air, as we spoke about in the first chapter of Tanya right they're just looking for self uh, promotion self fulfillment and not necessarily you know in such an evil an evil way sometimes it is uh, right sometimes it can be ruthless but even if it's not still it's still a challenge you know when it's all around you how do you maintain your integrity how do you maintain the battle well recognize that's that's where your battle will be is that you know your animal soul is say, looking around it's hey everybody's like this why shouldn't I why should I be any better okay we gotta be better gotta stand above so Lori I answered and um, And Susan, ah, 
How does sadness affect the heart? We're going to be dealing with sadness when it comes to chapter 26. We'll get there. Excellent questions, uh, Susan. But um, it affects it, no doubt. But uh, the details to come. Right now, just let's appreciate the idea of a battle inside of us. That there's a there's a urge within me just to follow my instincts, which will be for the desires that I have, the lusts that I have, and perhaps the well, the addictions that we have, and that we have um, a godly soul, and um, the fact that that there will be a battle. That itself is amazing. In other words, I'm not going to follow my instinct. I'm going to try to listen to what's the godly way. And my godly soul knows. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's music to God's ears. That battle that we have within us. Rick, in times when there is a draft for soldiers, should Jewish men and women abide by the laws of their country and be drafted even in an unjust war? That's a good question. And that's a very hypothetical question, so I can't answer it. Because who's declaring it's unjust? You know, the masses? Some college students? You know who's decided it's unjust if the rabbinical authority says it's unjust and he shouldn't go so that, then, you know, then that becomes an issue uh, and it's not so simple the, the truth is that, you know, not, so, not, not a simple answer to that but good question uh, Davida will this be the spiritual war before Mashiach comes this is the war right now yeah yeah should Jews allow them the unjust war again I don't know, you know, that's a very um, a hypothetical question, and I, I can't answer, I can't answer that properly. Andrew, although the animal soul tests, um, tests uh, us, does it spiritually want us to succeed? Oh, good question. What does the animal soul really want? You want us to succeed and not to succeed? Well, we'll, 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 we'll touch upon that. Um, it, you know, it, it depends what element of the animal soul and its root source it wants you to succeed the way it is actually in the battle. No, it's fighting. It's fighting. It wants to succeed the way it is expressed in real time, so to speak, as opposed to in, in its root source, as it were. Uh, Instagram. We have a question from Liba. With the resurrection of the dead and those who are resurrected, does the animal and godly soul change in any way before they're passing? I don't know if there's any change before they're passing. I'm not, I'm not clear on what that means before they're passing. Um, but, of course, coming back, times of Mashiach, you know, things are very different. Very different. Uh, Sarah, are, are the chariot study when you're exhausted from life or from acts of kindness yet you are you feel others don't appreciate your time and funds you may even barely have that others need to you need to be appreciated by others that's not the godly soul that's the animal soul that wants to be appreciated Godly soul doesn't need that. Godly soul that just needs connection. Godly soul just needs, you know, to do what's right, what's divinely good. That's all it needs. It doesn't need validation, doesn't need appreciation. Hey, it's a part of God. The animal soul needs validation. Animal soul needs validation. That's part of our uh, struggle. Do I need the validation from my animal soul? Or, um... Or do I just, hey, listen to the divine self in me, that part of God, that divine soul. So that, that's living a higher, a higher life. 
seeking any form of validation is not because it means you're 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 living based on somebody else you're you're living based on somebody else no not living because of anybody else you're living because of you because of ultimately your divine connection on here we're talking about the struggle that you listen to in you know to the to the divine soul and its desire what it wants to to uh, create for us powerful okay folks um i sorry i don't know if i uh lo, um briefly lori uh, asked why did uh, yitzhak isaac favor asa but esau um, and, uh, you know, who represents the animal soul. So good question, Laurie. So we kind of almost answered it because <laughs> the animal soul, remember, has goodness to it too. What's the proof? Got to love God with both your hearts. In other words, the love that of the godly soul to overflow that it, that incorporates a love of the animal soul, as we spoke about. So there is a love of the animals uh, from the animal soul, and that, you know, <coughs> as opposed to as we said, you know, there's sweetness in an apple. Well, the animal soul might want, you know, sweet food, but you can bring the animal soul to love and to appreciate the sweetness, the goodness. Of not just music or um, of a beautiful idea, but of even godliness, and therefore it can also love God. So, therefore, there is something about the animal soul and its love of God that is powerful. Um, and um, you know, in, in that sense, that's what Yitzchak wanted to give the blessings to Esav because he represented the animal soul that, in its root source, is in a sense, even higher and greater, that it should reveal itself in a love of God rather than self-love. That's what he wanted to accomplish. I would love to continue the conversation, but I have to go now teach elsewhere. I'm sorry, Louis. Um, we're going to have to wait until our next class to continue the conversation. A reminder, 1 o'clock, Rambam. And Sunday, an opportunity for everybody here to help us with the work that we do on charity.com forward slash CZK Chabad Zechren Kadeshim. Um, and um, we appreciate whatever you can do to help. We'll keep you posted on all of that. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zechren Kadeshim, Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have a wonderful day, a good Erev Shabbos, and a wonderful good Shabbos. <laughs>